I might have missed one rehearsal this year, but if somebody says she doesn't come to rehearsal, it could be one rehearsal out of all the rehearsals this year. That's enough. If I can't rehearse, I can't rehearse. But it's easy to talk about and sum it up when you just talk about rehearsal. We're sitting here. I'm supposed to be the franchise host and we're here talking about rehearsal. I mean, listen, we're talking about rehearsal. Not a show, not a show, not a show. We're talking about rehearsal, not a show. Not the show that I go out there and die for and do every show like it's my last. Not the show. We're talking about rehearsal, man. I mean, how silly is that? We're talking about rehearsal. I know I'm supposed to be there. I know I'm supposed to lead by example. I know that. I'm not shoving it aside. Like, I don't mean anything. I know it's important. I do. I honestly do. But we're here talking about rehearsal, man. What are we talking about? Rehearsal? We're talking about rehearsal, man? All right, Julie, that was great. Let's do it for real this time. Uh... Hey everyone, welcome on in to Call It A Night, the show where we talk sports and we don't take ourselves too seriously. I'm your host, Julie Stewart-Binks, and I'm so excited to be joined by broadcaster and good guy, Kazim Famuyide, to help us get amped for the start of the NBA season. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, let's oh, get yeah, let's it up. Oh, yeah, let's do it Capacity uh, crowd here. In yeah, the we got four people in here <laughs> clapping. Um, we're going to get to a whole bunch of stuff soon, but in yeah. one order or less, what do you think about the NBA season? Uh, at the risk of not sounding like literally everybody in the world, it looks like it's just an open, free, that's not even one word. It looks yeah. like oh. an intriguing season. Intriguing. Like, intriguing All right. is the word. Wow. That is very uh, exciting. Sesame Street. Yeah. That's the word of the day. <laughs> going with the letter I. Okay, well, we're going to dive into the start of a highly anticipated NBA season, talk Kaz's journey in sports, and bring in a little wrestling. Also, oh, yeah. we're going to go on a voyage with our buddy Steve Schlanger. But first, let's dive into tonight's headlines. The Titans beat the Chargers after denying San Diego from penetrating the goal line on two straight attempts. The name of the defense package was the no means no formation with friend zone in the second. <laughs> oh, gosh. Surprisingly, oh, it did he, stop them. Hashtag he too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys defensive end Demarcus Lawrence said that Eagles head coach Doug Peterson might want to shut his ass up after Peterson guaranteed a victory Sunday. After the loss, Peterson snapped back, but that's where my best plays come from. <laughs> right oh, out of boy. his ass. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's the one type of Philly special I'm totally okay not touching if it comes out of his ass. So you can keep that to yourself, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> The Yankees were knocked out of the playoffs by the Astros as the 5'6 inch Jose Altuve hit a walk off homer to send Houston to the World Series. It's the biggest hit by a tiny man since Grenade by Bruno Mars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, gosh, I'm like a Bruno Mars fan, so that kind of hurts. Oh, you I are, hurt. right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, gosh, chunky? No? Yes. Not your jam? Yes. I will Looking say, for the girl with the big old hoops? <laughs> I have one conspiracy that I do believe Bruno Mars is actually a woman. There's, you know, there's so many conspiracies with him. I don't know if he's... <laughs> what nationality is he? Like, I'm, I'm not even sure if he's Blasian or Mexican. Yeah. Or there's a... I don't know. But we need to do a deep dive on Bruno Mars. Song okay. slap, though. Right. Fuck with yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> Now, before Altuve's at bat, you could tell that he was pumped. There he was in the dugout, pacing back and forth <laughs> under the bench. <laughs> Little guy. The Yankees didn't take the loss lightly. One embarrassing moment came after the game when Yankees catcher Gary Sanchez took a swing at the water cooler and missed. Aww, too soon. <laughs> Couldn't even too hit that. Too soon. <laughs> After the Yankees loss, a bitter fan threw a beer can at an Astros fan's back while he was using the urinal. A classless move to be sure, but at least his first throw was more accurate than Chapman's last. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Still too soon, Julie. <laughs> there's a lot of Yankees. Yeah, there's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. 
Now, the World Series begins tonight with the Houston Astros hosting the Washington Nationals. Sports bettors are calling the Astros the biggest favorite since 2007, while most everyone else is calling it opening night for the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a weak World Series yeah, matchup. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. man. Like, you know, that's the one thing about baseball. Like, we, we talk about on Flaker, too. Like, we're not baseball fans. We're Yankee fans. Yeah. So, like, once the Yankees were out, we're like, all right, yeah, all right. Raptors and... On, on to the next one. <laughs> Raptors and Pelicans. And Pelicans, yeah. that's what we're watching now, damn it. Now, the NBA season starts tonight after a wild summer free agency moves. Kevin Durant is now on the Nets. Kawhi Leonard is now on the Clippers. And the Raptors are now in the denial stage of their grief. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Now, without, we got Pascal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a little spicy bean. Now, without, <laughs> without Kawhi, the Raptors are only raising their championship banner to half mass. <laughs> It's just like, it just, it just doesn't really It doesn't feel... really get the same zing as Ring Night usually yeah, has. It's, it's like, usually that yeah. optimism. It's just like memories. It's like, no. it's like celebrating your birthday and like your grandma dying at the same time. <laughs> no, do, one of my best How do I feel? You know, in the same vein, one of my best friends, his birthday's on 9-11. So, oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, the exact reaction we all get. Thing, so same thing as Kawhi not being on the <laughs> You know, it's, yeah, it's just. Yep. Now yeah. the New Orleans Pelicans have ruled out Zion Williamson for the first six to eight weeks of the season to fully recover from a knee injury. It's the first time that anyone in New Orleans has ever been careful about testing a joint. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst the biggest moves in the NBA offseason was Kyrie Irving, who left Boston for Brooklyn. When asked why he didn't make the move to L.A. to reunite with LeBron, Irving said, because I was afraid of falling off the earth. <laughs> That's the headline. It's a flat earth Dave. joke. It's a flat earth joke. We got them printed. <laughs> All right, we are warmed up, ready to rock. Before we dish the dirt on a new hoop season, we're going to take our first time out on the show. Don't go anywhere. We're turning NBA stars into wrestlers next. Yeah. Back on Call Tonight with Kazim Famuyide, host with Uninterrupted, SNY, Slam, Revolt, a whole lot more, 10,000 jobs. How do you <laughs> how do you prioritize just like having all of your fingers in all these different pies? Uh, I, I never feel like it's work. Like I, if anybody wants to pay me to talk and make dumb fart jokes about sports, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go do it. So you know, it doesn't ever feel like I'm working too hard. So okay, so one of those you have is Uninterrupted, which is LeBron's company. Yes. How did you get involved with that? What are you guys working on? Have you met LeBron? Uh, I've met LeBron a handful of times. Uh, I hosted a show with him. Uh, well, not with him. I hosted a show on Spotify called um, The Score last year. And we're also working on a new project that I can't talk about, but I guess Ooh. by the time it comes out, you know, people will know about it. But, um, you know, Today? I just... Is it coming out today? Uh, I would say like a week. I'll okay. give it a week, give it a week, and then I'll, I'll tweet <laughs> the right, link, cool, and then, cool. you know... Go check it out. But um, nah, man, like they just they've just always been like great people to me, man. Like I've I know a lot of people in that office. Um, I've known, you know, Paul Rivera for a long time, who's one of his closest confidants, and my guy Toon Day and a bunch of other folks over uninterrupted. So um always got love for those guys, and they always got love for me, and for, especially for a platform that's all about pro athletes to bring in a guy who's not a pro athlete at all to come that's help good, do stuff right? like yeah, it. You get like a little bit of diversity in that yeah, realm. It's yeah, just, exactly. You can't just be all a bunch of, you know, these guys get hit in the head a lot. So you yeah. need somebody <laughs> to talk and, you know, <laughs> sometimes. But okay. I love them. So Shout speaking out to of getting hit in the head a lot, you are also a, a host on Flagrant 2. Yes. Oh, man. Very Shout out to the Shout podcast. out to the asshole army all day, every day, <laughs> you know. Keep it tight. Yeah, so, I mean, how'd you get involved? With, with this project. It was wow. it was funny because, uh, you know, Andrew Schultz, Akash Singh, two extremely funny guys. Um, we filled in, uh, me and Akash filled in for an episode of Brilliant Idiots one day when Charlamagne was out of town. And we just did an episode and so many people were like, yo, you guys are hilarious. I would listen to you every week. So we were like, we should do this every week. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, you know, the more it kind of turned out that, like, right now where everybody wants to be so politically correct and not say the wrong thing, that's when we were like, oh, this is exactly where we need to go. Like, mm -hmm. the complete opposite way. And uh, it's, it's a lot more fun. It's freeing. We get to just 
talk shit and not really take each other very seriously. And like, they're the comedians. I'm like the straight lace sports guy. And uh, you know, they're literally two of the funniest people in the entire world. They can make anything hilarious. So, and you know, the army provides, man. Like every single thing that we've done to this day, like our fans and our support system have kind of like Really always, followed always the follow the lead. So, I like yeah. how you call yourself the straight lace sports guy. I'm the straight lace sports guy making uh, dick and fart jokes <laughs> as well. So that's kind of that. That should yeah, tell you. Know, you I know because I how flagrant you, it gets. I wanted to call you comedian on the show because you know you've got that. You got that vibe. Uh, comedian stretching it. Okay. Comedian stretching. I'll Maybe someday you'll I appreciate the compliment. Stage. I'll take it. But. Okay, well, almost did once. Let, oh, really? But no, didn't. Mm, soon. Soon. One day. Okay. One day. One day. Yeah. Um, well, we were talking sports. NBA season kicks off tonight. We got a little LA on LA crime. Yes. W what do you think happens with this? Like, who's gonna Lakers? own LA but who's mm -hmm. gonna own this season between the two I still think the Lakers are gonna own it man like I know the Clippers are super deep they got Kawhi who's a monster uh, Paul George is still coming off of surgery mm -hmm. and uh, yeah they're very deep but like at the end of the day when it comes to the playoffs the game slows down a lot and there's really no answer for Anthony Davis anywhere mm -hmm. so you got you couple that with LeBron James a couple of shooters I mean you'll be you'll be just fine I think the Lakers you know I still think the Lakers run that city run that building run that town man yeah the West is gonna be interesting east Absolutely. is a little bit more precarious right now what do you think happens uh in the east yeah well, I feel like it's Phillies to lose, right? Like, you know, last year they kind of got embarrassed and Joel Embiid was off crying, you know, and I think that was the first time you could kind of see him starting to take himself seriously, you know? Like, Ben Simmons, I don't know what he's been doing, but he hit a jumper and the entire world went crazy. So if he takes, like, <laughs> two or three of those and, like, they'll be okay. I think it's theirs to lose. Um, Giannis will have something to say about that uh, with yes, the Bucks, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But, like, the East is just so trash. It's like, what, what, yeah, all right. what, what you do know, you do? Yeah, right. You still okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the Raptors, yeah. Shout out to the Raptors. Oh, yeah, spicy hey, You know what? We got we got the one championship, and then we're like, Listen. okay, never again. It was just like this weird fluke that I'm happened. I'm a sad Knicks fan, and like the Raptors are like the closest to you know outside of like a what? That's we what won. Mean. That's you what I suck. That, we do suck. <laughs> yeah, are you kidding What's me? Do you know, I will I will give I will give my left foot to have I one know. championship oh, with so one good. superstar player and then just great. leave. Then oh my great. god. Okay, all right. Well, on that note, we want to hear about some of your favorite games coming up this weekend. Our buddies at FanDuel are celebrating the sports equinox. This weekend means all major sports leagues will play at least one game. They're running a free-to-play game where if you pick 20 of the 26 games correctly on October 27th, you'll get a cut of the prize, which is a quarter of a million dollars. Wow! <laughs> yes, I just wrote that in the prompter. Wow. Yes, if you could watch one, only one game from each sport, what would you pick? Oh, God. Okay, boom. One game from each sport. Uh, that day, I see the Nets and the Grizzlies for, for the NBA. I like a John Morant, Kyrie Irving face-off mm, yes. of, like, you know, those point guards, present, future. Uh, the toilet bowl in the NFL, the Buccaneers and the Titans. Can't miss that. Can't miss that. You know, Jameis, and, Jameis Mariota, and myself will all have the same bird's-eye view of the game, so that should be really fun. <laughs> uh, hockey. <laughs> and then baseball, you know, we got, you know, the game. You're going to be watching all the hockey games. I mean, That's you know, right, yeah. the, all that all that hockey is going to be so oh, much fun yeah. to watch. That that The way that puck moves oh, yeah. with the stick. <laughs> can't, can't wait to see that. And, uh, you know, the Astros and Nats, man, uh, the the most, the only 5'2 man I've ever been envious of in my life, Jose Altuve. 5'6, let's give him the extra uh, four uh, inches. Uh, 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 Five two. <laughs> Those cleats are, are a little, you know, yeah, they give yeah, a little bit of a, a bump. A bit. But uh, uh, yes, yeah. we got game five potentially of that. Potentially. Again. All right, great stuff. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll head out of the studio with our intrepid reporter, Steve Schlanger, who's got his pulse on cyclocross. Whoa. All that and more next. JSB alongside Kaz. We love to do things here a little differently on Call It A Night, which is why we're so excited to catch up with our intrepid reporter Steve Schlanger, who took some time to find out more about a very special cyclocross event called Jingle Cross. When you're looking for an event that's truly unique, one that blends high-intensity sports with a high-intensity party, where do you go? Where can you find it? 
For me, <laughs> that's easy. In the middle of a cornfield in Iowa. It's called Jingle Cross. Known for its challenging course, the world's best bike riders compete in this grueling three-day race up and down the grass and mud-covered hills of Iowa City. For me, cycle cross, it's hard, it's super fun, it's a little bit crazy because you don't know why you're doing it. The bike is clearly not meant for what cycle cross is. Let's go! Now, is it more of a bike race with a party on the side or more <laughs> of a party with a bike race on the side? You know, the best kinds of cross races, you, you just can't tell. What do you think we have more of here? Bikes or beers? Man, there were a lot of beers drank last night, I think. But why Iowa? Of all places, <laughs> how did it happen in Iowa? You know, people in Iowa love to have a good time. They're just doing it with bikes now. Coming back up to you. Well, whether it's bikes, beers, or even banjos, those who compete here are a uh, different breed, you might say. Wow, not sure what we just watched there, but thank you so much, Langer. Great stuff. We're back with Kazim Fa Femi. I can't. Famuide. Ah! Famuide. I practiced it so much. White folks, it's not that hard. All right, it's all right. It's, it's OK. Famuide, famuide. Famuide. I have it in the prompt here. Oh, all wait. Right. Okay. Okay. okay, all right. It ends we begin. OK, so you're <laughs> <laughs> You're a big wrestling guy. Yes. NBA season is beginning, and yes. because of that, we are going to play a little game that we have called Casting Call. Let's do it. Wow, look at that oh, graphic. Spicy graphics. Okay. Spare no expense. Kaz. I love it. Okay, so for tonight's NBA season beginning, we want to have you pick an NBA player and then tell us why and who you think that they remind you of in the WWE. Okay. Perfect. All right. Sounds with good. Let's do it. Let's Kawhi see. Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. All right. Uh, Kawhi is um, doesn't talk much, mm -hmm. but you know he lets everything on the court do the talking for him. You know, like people say he's a fun guy. People say you know you can say whatever you want about him because he's so quiet. But when it comes to getting it done within those 94 feet, he's one of the best in the world. And he reminds me of a guy named Cesaro who's in the WWE right now. Doesn't talk much, but when it comes to that ring, when it comes to those four pillars to post, he is one of the absolute best in the world. So that's a, that's a, that's who I see when it comes. To Kawhi and Leonard. he's kind of like a bit of a traitor, right? Like a little he, bit, yeah. a little bit. You know, he used to be one of the un-Americans, and now he's the Swiss cyborg, and now yeah. he's all these, you know. But yeah, but he's a good guy, good guy. Heart. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we did not take any of that Toronto yeah. stuff to heart. Yeah. Uh, all right, LeBron James. <laughs> moving on. What do we got here? You yeah, know, uh, LeBron's the franchise man. He's the king of the NBA. Even though he do he's not the champion, even though he's not the reigning NBA, he doesn't have the reigning NBA title right now. Like. He is still the man. You still gotta go through him to be considered any type of special. And he kind of reminds me of the WWE's franchise, who is Roman Reigns. He is not the champion right now, but he is the absolute guy. He is The Rock's um, cousin. You know, he's got that Samoan blood in him. You know, he is extremely athletic. He is, you know, even though he's not the champion, even though he doesn't have the MVP, even though he doesn't have a title around his waist, everybody knows that's the dude when he walks into the court. Yeah, and so. how do you think Roman feels about China? Uh, well, I, you know, they're going to Saudi Arabia this week, so I mean, yeah. Hurt dogs don't yeah, holler, we'll man. Yeah, we'll <laughs> okay, next up we got Kyrie Irving. Yeah, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving is one of the most creative, uh, you know, just. Things that he can do with a basketball, no human being should be able to do, man. Just has that thing on a yo-yo, on a string. Like, you see kids going out to do it. He is like the epitome of don't try this at home, like when you're, when you're a basketball player. And he reminds me of a guy named Ricochet from the WWE. Ricochet is a kind of a newer dude, 
but he is absolutely one of the most incredible high-flying wrestlers I've ever seen. He just does things that no human being should be able to do. He kind of reminds me of like Spider-Man, you know? He's just, he's incredible. So I can kind of see. And maybe he has a little drama around him too. You yeah, know. you know, yeah, you, yeah. They, I think Ricochet believes in the flat earth too. You know what I mean? Like, I think they have some, they, they can have some really fun conversations. They talk to each sure. other. So I can see that. Okay, so another guy we got. We've got to find out Kevin Durant. Who does he remind you of? You know, Kevin Durant, he is extremely talented. He's an NBA Finals MVP two times. He's an NBA MVP. He's an NBA champion. And he gets into a lot of trouble on Twitter. He lets his oh, mouth yeah, yeah. get into a lot. He lets his mouth get into a lot of trouble all the time, but he can always back it up. And he reminds me of the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. Ooh, you know, nice. like Becky Lynch, she's the she's the man. She is <laughs> I'm for almost no, it was almost a great movie though. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah. Great movie. Uh, she reminds me of Becky Lynch because Becky talks a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. But she backs it up every time she gets into the ring, just like KD. So, and they're both champions. So, there it is. That's Thank perfect. You. Okay, we've got Russell Westbrook. Who does this remind you of? Russell Westbrook is kind of a diva. You know what I mean? Like every time he, he's extremely talented, though he's an enigma. Every time he walks into the to the to the uh, to the court when he's doing the little fashion you know, runway walk yeah. into the NBA games. Uh, all eyes are on him. And he kind of reminds me of Sasha Banks, you know, the boss. Oh, yes. They're both very, they, they're they very out there. They got a lot of fashion. They kind of stick out like sore thumbs wherever they go, whether it's hair, whether it's clothes, whether it's jewelry. A um, lot of attitude. Don't take shit from nobody. And I like it, even though they haven't really won yeah, championships little, in a while. chip on their shoulder. They have a chip on their shoulder, but they're both extremely exciting to watch. And they have a lot of stamps. I'm a Russell Westbrook stand like and a Sasha Banks stand. Yeah, that's the cool thing to say now if you're a fan. Oh, yeah. Fans, I'm a right? Stan. It's a super fan. It's Shout out to Eminem. It's a super fan, yes. This is the one thing he left us with. Uh, yeah, that's I love Eminem. Age, well. No, I, oh, man, no. Eminem, <laughs> great Last time I listened to Eminem album, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay, we have time for one more. Uh, James Harden. James Harden, man. He is a guy that... For some reason, he, he sets all these records. Like, you know, if you just look at, if you do the blind test and just look at his numbers and his records and everything out there, he's one of the best to ever do it. But for some reason, people just can't seem to get behind him, man. Like, people just kind of look at him and just like, I don't know, there's just something about you that like, I just don't like. But he has the people that, that swear by him, that think he's one of the greatest to do it. And he reminds me of the current WWE Universal Champion Seth Rollins, who uh, is the man, you know? Like, he is the guy who, you know, he, he's been at the top of the game for all this entire year, especially since WrestleMania, beating Brock Lesnar twice. And uh, he does things, and if you look at his resume, he is one of the best to ever do it. But for some reason, there's this section of fans that are wrestling fans, just kind of like James Harden, who has a section of NBA fans who just think, oh, all he does is he games the system. All he does is travel. He does all this BS that isn't really basketball. I mean, he does. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I can see right now. Yeah. I can see that. Okay, that was some awesome stuff. We'd love to get to some other guys. We don't have as much time as we thought we would. Uh, we got to take it. a lot. That's your fault there. Uh, <laughs> But uh, take our final time out. When we return, we're going to discuss all of Kaz's cool projects on the go, which will inevitably make you feel like a bit of a loser. All that and more coming up next. <laughs> here at Kaz. Where can we see you next? You can see me on Flagrant 2 each every day, Tuesday and Thursday with Andrew Schultz and Akash Singh. You see me on my new podcast at the New York Post oh, called great. Big Apple Buckets. It's a New York Knicks podcast I'll be hosting. You can catch me on SNY every Tuesday and Thursday on The Thread with you. Yeah, sometimes I'm on there Sometimes. Too. And uh, Kali, Duce Palooza, um, Atlanta. Perfect. We gotta go. Oh my Bye. gosh. Bye. Hollywood, New York. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>